Wall Street handing in a monster month. Our next guest, though, he is one of Barron's top ranked financial advisors and says you should use this rally to lighten your exposure up. Joining us now, Richard Saperstein, Treasury Partners Chief Investment Officer. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. Likewise. So I think the last time you were here, you said you had more cash than you've ever had before or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Are you still there? Absolutely. Why? Uh, Look, the lag effect of the Fed policy hasn't really set in. So we expect to see that occur in uh, Q2, Q3 of next year. Think about this. Right now, the plumbing in the system is slowing down dramatically. Banks are reducing risk-weighted assets. Uh, Loan growth is slowing. Uh, Mortgages are down. Business confidence is down. You name it. Things are slowing that it's not really reflected in stock prices right now. So we think there's a wave coming in 2023. What, what do you make of this incredible move that we had in the month of October? Well, I think it's great for investors who are overweight equities and want to lighten up. Think about it. We've had 15 years of financial repression. And investors in their asset allocations have overallocated to volatility. Remember Tina. OK, so asset allocations have to shift back. And now there's an opportunity in bonds as a result of the rise in yields. What if you're too negative? What if things as Lloyd Blankfein suggested in the tweet that I read a little while ago with Adam Parker that he sent a couple of days ago that things could turn, that we could be nearing a turn? What do you make of that? Well, and, and, and if that happens, by the way, it's all stimulative for stocks. Sure. Do you believe that or not? No, because I've heard that for the last six months. And think about it. EPS estimates for 23 started the year at 255. It's now 235. Everyone has to ask themselves, will next year be higher EPS than 22, given the rate environment is 400 basis points higher? Why does it have to be higher than, than this year? Maybe it just doesn't, it's not as bad as some people think. Well, if, even if you get 220, 225, we still have an elevated multiple in a higher interest rate environment and one bred with uncertainty that we're going into a recession. Over the last six months, though, how many times has the Fed hiked, right? They've hiked a lot, right? So we're not in the same place today than we were six months ago. They've already done a lot. What if they signal this week or give us the idea in some form or fashion that they're, if not very close to the end, they are certainly nearing it? In that environment, the market will continue to melt up you look at a two-year treasury, it's really expecting a terminal rate of somewhere around 475, 5%. So we'll see a melt up when the Fed signals they're pausing. However, that doesn't mean pivoting. Pivoting will occur when a couple of things happen. Either we start seeing massive slowdown, we start seeing inflation being reduced. Lots of things have to occur for Mm -hmm. a pivot, but not a pause. Well, why isn't a pause enough? Why isn't an end to the rate hike cycle enough. Are you you saying you're only going to get bullish again on stocks and deploy some of this cash that you have in equities if they signal that they're going to start cutting rates? We're really past thinking about the Fed right now. We have a playbook, which is first, housing goes down. Housing is already starting to drop. Second is earnings per share and margins. That's what we expect to occur largely in next year in estimates. And finally, we'll see unemployment go up. At that point, then we see the market hitting a bottom. So you may be holding this level of cash for, I mean, I I guess I'm not crazy to suggest six to 12 months from now. Well, we're earning money on it. And what I know, but you know what I mean? You're not going to put it into equities for that long of a period of time. Is that that sort of what you're thinking about? Totally comfortable because our clients are wealthy and they want to stay wealthy. And our job is to keep them there and avoid a lot of excess risk, given that we might be going into recession. I have to believe that you are trying to keep them rich in ways that uh, extend beyond just piles of cash. So where? Where well, are the opportunities? OK, so right now uh, we're seeing absolute opportunity in the municipal bond market. And rates have gone up to roughly four and a half percent tax free. And for investors in a highly taxed state, that's roughly nine, nine and a half percent pre-tax equivalent. The long term returns in the market are nine to 10 percent. So we can basically own bonds, get pre-tax market returns without the volatility. But there's an added benefit. If we go into recession, the economy slows. What happens? Rates go down and bond prices go up. So a total return on a muni today, if rates drop 200 basis points, is over 25 percent. You don't like the two year, which seemingly everybody likes, and you've urged people to stay away from one of the more popular trades. Yeah. Why? Well, it's a dark area to be in because if the Fed tightens too much 
and the economy slows, when will it probably get to its bottom? It's somewhere around the end of 23 or 24, right when these bonds are maturing. So investors that have maturities in 24, a two-year paper, they're going to be re reinvesting at a horrible time. We're looking past that and saying, look, I want to get out there, longer-term maturities, prepare for a slowdown. If there isn't a slowdown, we're earning 4.5% tax-free. Didn't you like big tech? as one of the areas in yeah. the market? You did. Sure. <laughs> oh, Let's used... talk about it. Let's talk about it. I mean, okay, you, you, you liked an area of the market that's gotten beaten up pretty good. Yeah, we're still doing well with it. So. Well, what did you like? How are you doing well in it? Okay, so our largest overweight is oil, all right? After that, it comes to large cap tech, Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Apple is the metaverse. Everything that we do is already on the phone. That is the real metaverse right now. You don't have to go any further. Google and Microsoft are the greatest superhighway of the world. It's the cloud. Microsoft's revenues, 50%, come from the cloud. Google, 37%. These companies have grown their cash flow since 2019 at 75%, and market cap is only up 63%. They generated $237 billion of free cash flow in the last 12 months. I like the cash flow story. I'll probably own them for another decade, having been in them since the 90s. Well, why didn't you buy more when they dipped last week, then, if you love them so much and you're holding all this cash? We'll have lots of opportunity. You think, they're going, you think they're going even lower? I think the market generally will go lower. And so if we think about entry points... Take a multiple on expected earnings for next year, mm -hmm. and I think we go lower, whether it's 3,300, 3,000. We'll have opportunity to add to these names, but we're not doing it yet. We do like oil. Oil is a great sector for us. And last question, because I do have to go, and, and I asked Adam Parker the same question. You, you like oil after the stocks have rallied. I mean, I know you've liked it all along, but now the stocks have rallied a lot. You still like it here? You'd put, you'd put money to work? You'd, you'd urge our viewers to do that? Yeah, because the free cash flow on these companies are anywhere from 8 to 25%. You can't find that anywhere. And so they're going to return in munis. Well, yeah. <laughs> you find it in munis. Look, broad asset allocation is important. Have good quality equities. But now's the time you can go back into the muni market. All right. We'll leave it there. You let us know when you go back into those big cap. Big cap text. Will do. All right, that's Rich Saperstein joining us here at Post 9. Be sure to catch tomorrow's CNBC Your Money event.